welcome back to my channel. Hi, I'm Makeup by Charlie or Charlotte and yeah, hi. Um, how are we all today? Um, Happy New Year to everybody. Um, yeah, I hope this year is going to be much better than last. Uh, so yeah, positive thoughts guys, positive thoughts. So in today's video I just thought I'd do a little get ready with me. Um, just wanted to try some bits of makeup that I haven't tried yet, just just general put makeup on my face and just have chats with you. Um, I thought maybe you might want to get to know me a little bit more, if you don't already know me a little bit more. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, my mental health struggles that I've had all my life, basically, well, all my life, most of my life, and just get into a bit more depth with how I am um, and why I'm like I am. Um, yeah, I just think it'd be nice just to talk about it and yeah so yeah if you want to listen and learn a little bit more about me and watch some makeup get put onto this lovely scabby face because I'm still spotty although they are getting better this guy seems to be actually improving from this new stuff that I'm using so fingers crossed uh, Al, I don't know if to call him Albert, Al or Bert it depends on what I'm feeling that day but we'll call him Al today He's, uh, he's doing alright, um, he's getting there, he's still not looking too attractive, but whatever. But yeah, stay tuned. I've already primed my eyes, done my eyebrows because I find it boring. That's why they look very bold. <laughs> um, and I really want to try this uh, palette that I've had in my collection for a couple, of, well, about a month or two now. And this is the Ace Beauty um, Oceanic palette. So it's a bluey green palette. And it looks like this, so yeah, I just thought I'd give it a, a whirl today. I think I'm going to do a halo eye, because um, I haven't done one for a while, and yeah, I fancy doing it. thinking blue, blue with green, since that's what I've got <laughs> for me. So, first shade I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use, I think I might mix them actually. A bit of um, Pacific and a bit of oh, Lagoon. I think I'm going to mix them two together. Be adventurous, Charlotte. Make sure I get rid of all my creases because um, you don't want to start off with creases on your eyes. Everybody knows that. Anyway, so uh, I wanted to just basically put some makeup on my face and have a chat and I thought I'd discuss with you something that's really important in my life. I say really important. It's important to me um, and it, it affects me greatly. As I'm sure m many of you who also suffer with mental health will know, it's one of the worst things in the world. I would not wish it upon anybody at all. In the slightest, I suffer with something called, well, I suffer with a severe phobia called emetophobia. And you might have heard of this before. I think I pronounce it correctly. And basically, emetophobia is when you are very scared of vomiting or being around people who vomit from being ill, drunk, anything. So uh, I've suffered with this particular phobia since I was probably around seven, around seven years old. I remember a time when I wasn't afraid and then I remember the time, a time when I was. Can't remember what set it off in particular. I'll go into detail a little bit more about what counsellors and uh, professionals over the years have said to me. But basically, yeah, so that is what it is. I remember the first time, I say first time, I, I remember being afraid. My brother, younger brother, Ashley, I hope he doesn't mind me mentioning his name, I'm sure he doesn't care, but my younger brother, um, there's only a couple of years between me and him. Um, so we pretty much grew up together. Suffered quite badly with asthma and coughing fit. So he used to be sick quite a bit, mainly from that. And I'll never forget, I think, me and Ashley were in the back of the car and we must have been going through a drive through with my mum um, for some tea or dinner, whatever you want to call it, some food. And he started a coughing fit and I just remember panicking just sheer panic, sheer panic, and I tried to climb 
through the centre console to the front to get away from it. And obviously my mum had no idea what I was doing. So she, <laughs> she was like, what are you doing? Get back. Um, so yeah, I mean that's like the earliest memory of me being afraid. I didn't quite know fully why I was afraid or what I was afraid of. Or, and I still don't really, but... Um, well, I, I kind of do, but it's it's a difficult one. So, I mean, to be honest with you, um, I grew up... I'm just going in with the... Sorry, I didn't mention. The first brush I went into was a Spectrum A12, which is just like a like a pencil brush. Um, and then I'm just going to go into just a fl small fluffy brush. This is a Molly O'Brien Cha Cha brush. Um, and I'm just going to buff out these edges first with a clean brush. And, um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, I, I've always had it, but it never really affected my day-to-day -day life as a child all that much, apart from when um, I was directly affected by it, by being poorly myself, or somebody in my family being poorly, or be, just being around it, but it never affected me day-to-day. -day. So I never really noticed it all that much, apart from when I had to face it, and then that's when I had to deal with it. Um... And then as I got older, I got more and more into reading, I suppose, about the transmission of like illnesses and things like that. Just because I, I wanted to know what was wrong with me because I didn't, I didn't fully understand what it was that I, that I had and what I was going through. Sorry, I'm just looking up for brushes. And I probably did, I did myself more harm than good by looking into it for definite. Um, I'm just going to go into Blue Clam next, which is this blue here. And a Spectrum B10 brush. And yeah, um, obviously I learned how illness is transmitted from one to another. And I specifically looked at more like stomach bugs, obviously, because that was more relevant to what I wanted to look into and what I wanted to know, to prevent, let's say. Um, and unfortunately this then caused me to become a little bit of a, a clean freak. So I, I now, in, as a side effect of having a metnophobia, I also have OCD now. Um, whereby I like to wash my hands and if I don't wash my hands I start to panic and um, especially like before I eat or anything like that really I can cope with it for a certain amount of time but not for very long I like to um, have hand wash around because um, as much as hand gel is okay I've got it in my head that hand gel is not good enough I need to wash, physically wash my hand, feel at ease um, and this is obviously, like I said, a side effect from me reading into it a little bit and trying to prevent myself from getting ill. But this happened around the age of about 19, 18, 19, something like that. It was, actually it might be a bit younger, maybe 18. It was around college time, I was in college. And yeah, so over the years that has got a word and as you can imagine people it's a I think it's a, from what I gather from reading about it, I'm not an expert but emetophobia is a quite a common phobia in especially in women and it's obviously a phobia that a lot of people don't talk about because it same as me I I, I never spoke to anybody about it unless I, I was faced with it and even then I still tried to hide it because I was ashamed I felt weird, I still feel like a freak, I still apologise for my, um, what do you call it, my behaviours. It is what it is, isn't it? And so it's it's something that a lot of people don't talk about and it's not something that comes up often in conversation. And obviously there's varying degrees of severities of how um, serious it is for a person. I'll look for another brush. I've got some brushes here but they're not the ones that I want. So yeah. I'm just going to go into um, Amalfi M456, yeah. And I'm going to go into the shade Fiji next, which is like a, a teal. And I'm just going to go over that. 
after that happened and I am, I'm really lucky I've got an understanding um, I've always had understanding people around me that understand it is a difficult thing to explain to others and yeah I'm petrified I'll be honest and it's just getting worse as I'm getting older but I'll go into that in a second as to why it's getting worse and obviously this has definitely brought me down over the years it's it's affected my everyday life because I I don't drink alcohol for obvious reasons um, I don't want to be intoxicated and cause myself to be in a situation that I don't want to be in you know sicky why I've put off having children because of it anything like that um for the reason being obviously the the obvious one which is morning sickness but not even that um I worry about being a bad mother not being able to look after my children properly when they're poorly I always worry that I'm going to be a bad parent because of it um even though my children will come before anything I know how powerful it can be um, this illness in the fact that I know how much it can actually like affect me and control me sometimes and it worries me and it always has just stuff like that stops me from going and experiencing new things such as um, doing like I don't know anything where you might be able to think that I could you know you'd be like oh it's a bit dodgy is that roller coasters things you know just simple stuff like that I mean that one doesn't really affect me all that much even like flying going on public transport um, anything like that so for treatments because over the years obviously I've wanted to seek help for it um, because I've got to many a point in my life where I've just been like, I've, I've just had enough now, I've just, I'm tired. I'm tired of being like this. Um, I mean, I just, yeah, I'd had enough. Uh, I'm just going to go into a 228 Jessup brush, it's a big fluffy brush. And I'm just going to the, go into the shade Barley, which is this light blue. Um, let just see how this works on the outer edge of this teal. Want to blend it out a bit more so i mean the first time i went to the doctors i must have been about 16 maybe about it it might have been when i was younger but i didn't even really realize what what it was because i had been to the doctors about having a lump in my throat which now i know it isn't an actual lump it's it it's nerves anxiety it's being constantly um, anxious and I've had that, I, I think I went to the doctors about that about maybe when I was like 13 or something. But the first time I went to the doctors about the actual phobia itself, I must have been about 16, 16, 17, when it was starting to really affect me a little bit more on a day-to-day -day life. And my mum went with me. Um, and I'll never forget that the doctor wasn't the most, not sympathetic, with. she was fine with me, but... Um, the doctor insinuated that it might have been my mum's fault because I might have been around um sorry I'm just going back in with those shades again exactly the same and just I won't talk you through them but just to intensify the colours but whilst I'm talking I might as well just continue on that just shuffle you around a little that you know they, they, they sort of insinuated that it might have been not her fault but it could have been I don't know what the word she used because it was such a long time but you see my mum is a she's the opposite to me in the fact that if she doesn't feel very well she would rather go you know uh, I don't like to say it because <laughs> even saying it makes me anxious um, she like she'd rather be sick she's always been a bit of a a sicky person anyway um, she just always has been and I think it really made her feel guilty and it's nothing to do with my mum at all and she knows that now but I'll never forget how heartbroken she was when the doctor said that. And it was awful that she thought it could have been her fault. But anyways, they first referred me to a therapist back then, which was a CBT therapist. Um, and I'll be honest, I didn't go see anyone because um, once I looked up what CBT was and once the doctor explained it to me, I wasn't ready to do it and um, if you don't know what if you don't you guys don't know what CBT therapy is it's cognitive behavioral therapy it's basically the idea of 
changing the way you think about certain things and it's slowly introducing um it's turning your negative perceptions of things positive into a positive way um gradually Teresa Mulhern will probably be able to explain it better so <laughs> she's a psychologist but yeah it's basically that that's what it is they expose you to the um to the what you're scared of and try and turn your negative emotions towards it into into more neutral positive ones more manageable emotions so I didn't go and see it someone I filled the farm out because um, I did like a self referral farm um, that the doctor printed out for me and I, di I didn't ever do anything with it because I was like I can't I, I ain't got the capacity to do it and you know and I didn't which you know it, it's it, it's hard it's hard to help yourself in these situations because imagine you wanting to face your worst fear you were you're having to voluntarily face your worst fear and it's not nice the thought of it honestly petrified me still does anywho a few years passed um I then went and actually did do it. Uh, I, I self referred myself again um, because I was getting worse. Could see myself getting worse, you know. And yeah, I got a therapist, saw her every Saturday morning. And the thing what I didn't like about this therapist, we didn't. I'm sure she was a lovely lady, but we did just didn't click. We just didn't have the same. We didn't have a kind of rapport with one another, and I didn't trust her enough with how I felt. She wasn't listening to me. She was focusing on my OD, OCD tendencies rather than mere metaphobia tendencies. And it's like I said to her, I was like, if I get help with my metaphobia, my OCD tendencies will improve by itself because I only do what I do because of that and she wasn't listening to me and in the end I had to stop going to her because she was stressing me out by not listening to me and what my needs were um, I think her she thought obviously my main problem was the OCD and it, it wasn't and isn't still isn't now it's just like I said a side effect of what I go through and anywho so I obviously stopped going to that for that reason mainly and uh, it was uncomfortable I need a drink sorry I'm talking a lot so you have to excuse me um maybe about another another year passed possibly and another year or two passed and again I got to the point where I don't know I'm not gonna say anything badly about him but um my ex-partner was obviously very keen for me to get better um, that's the words he used I just don't, he, he didn't understand fully I don't think that even if <laughs> even if I do get help and it works very well I will probably never get get better but he, want, he wanted me to be normal um, and it made me feel ashamed to be honest he wanted me to help myself and I kind of understand that but he did make me feel like a weirdo a lot of the time um, he needed somebody who wasn't me in the end because of that and it didn't help our relationship at all but anyway because of that um, I looked at other avenues of what other um, therapies I could have and I fell into hypnotherapy now <laughs> if you believe in hypnotherapy and it's worked for you brilliant I completely I'm so happy that it, it's worked for you um, and I just, at this point anyway, I thought, oh, I'll give it a try. This guy seems like he knows what he's doing. And he was very uh, well established in his field, I believe. I, I did a lot of research. Um, yeah. And he, he seemed like a, a nice fella. Um, he was not cheap. <laughs> um, I think for four sessions it was like £500 or something. Or was it three sessions for £500? It wasn't a lot. 
I mean, it wasn't a lot of sessions for the amount of money it was. I went to get on the train that day to go, freaked out completely. Anxiety attack, panic attack, because obviously I suffer with panic attacks quite often, um, being as I am. Um, sorry, I'm just going to put a bit of more deep blue there. Um, and my mum came and got me and she took me to the clinic. Um, and she went with me and I have to say I did all three sessions with him because he believed that those three sessions were enough to hypnotize me out of those thoughts and it didn't work and I think a lot of it has to do with you and your perception if you believe it's gonna work I think it will um, but for me, I think I was, I'm, all, I'm a sceptic anyway, I am a sceptic. Um, I wanted it to work, I was really hopeful that it would. But always in the back of my mind, there was that doubt that it wouldn't work. And I think that's what it was in the end. And like I said, if it's worked for you, absolutely fantastic. I'm so, I'm really pleased for you. Because nobody wants to go through anything that forces you ha having to have to have that kind of therapy. Um, and if it worked for you, I'm... I'm really pleased because it's not cheap either, like I say, just to try it um, and it not work. So that that's that. That um, put a little bit of, try and get rid of this little harsh line that I've got here. I, what else was I've done? I've tried CBT again. Um, I had a good therapist actually this last time that I've been and I've gone. He was very nice, very approachable. He did focus on my emetophobia. I had a good uh, six, seven sessions with him where he gradually introduced me to my fear by showing me, unfortunately, showing me pictures, videos. It was going to pictures, videos and work its way up with like sounds and they have to, obviously it's a difficult one because they have to do it ethically. They can't like, I don't know, it's a difficult, they can't do it in a way, they can't just make me throw up on command, do you know what I mean? Um, I'm just going to put a bit of primer in the middle of my eye so I'm just gonna just a second I'm just gonna put a bit of um revolution eye base in the middle of my eye um but yeah anyway and he was really good and I was getting on really well with him and then unfortunately he fell sick himself um so um, he had to stop working and because of that I was I didn't have therapy for a while because they didn't have anybody to replace him for a while and when they did, I got anxious again, so I uh, ended up not going back. This was about a year, where are we now? A year and a half ago, maybe, no, it's way oh, two years ago. I have to think wh where we are, time goes so fast. Okay, they're not perfect, but they'll do. Right, oh, what shade do we go into the middle? I do like the shade Mykonos. Oh, that blue. Ooh. I think I'm going to go into the shade Bay and then I might go into the shade Bora Bora. So, as I said, I'm going to go into the shade Bay first all over and then I think I'm going to tap on some Bora Bora on top, just in the centre. Um, anyway, as I was saying, yeah, so I got on really well with this. Um, psychiatrist um and he was very he was lovely and um, we did focus a lot on the um might try this wet actually we did focus a lot on oh that's nice wet um as and why the root cause of it and things like that because obviously i i don't know um and we don't particularly think there's anything singular that's happened that's caused me to have this effect and negative perception of it it's as badly as I do um, we just think there's been a couple of incidents um, that I've had over the years growing up that's um, what did I say traumatised me <laughs> made me have the perception such a negative perception of of it um, for example I'll give you I'll give you one. I remember when and this is a very distinct memory I was in nursery so I must have been very young at the time was in the cloakroom 
Um, I think, if I remember rightly, we were going out to play or something like that. We were in the club for something. And I remember not feeling too well. You see where this is going, don't you? And um, I was sick in the cloakroom. And all I remember was all these kids screaming and running away from me. And I was heartbroken. I didn't know what what I'd done to make them scream and run away from me. And obviously, I know, I know, no, it's just kids. It's just kids for you, you know. But back then, I just really didn't get it. I didn't understand. I just, I didn't understand why I caused that reaction. For something I couldn't help. Um, so obviously that was mentioned. There's a few other like similar scenarios like that. Apparently, I don't remember this, but for some reason I must have watched something because I said something to my mum at a young age, um, which she said was odd. She said apparently I came up to her and I said uh, something like, um, "Mummy, if I'm sick." Um, it will weaken my heart, won't it? And I will die. Um, and she was like, what do you mean? And I was like, if I'm sick, as in be sick, it'll weaken my heart and I'll die. And I don't know where I got this from. Um, but that is apparently what I said. By the way, this palette's very nice. Just for reference. Because <laughs> I've not used it before. Or I've not used this brand before either. And they're an indie brand. Can buy them on Beauty Bay. Yeah, that's nice, is that? And um, yeah, so it's a couple of reasons, or probably a few re reasons or issues that I've had over the years that's caused me to have these negative perceptions over it. Um, we also discussed why I'm afraid and things like that, and obviously it surfaced that. Um, a lot of my fear is to do with embarrassment and control I like to be in control and obviously when you're poorly like that you're not in control so that's why I get slightly anxious when I'm um, out and about or on public transport I'm just going to blend the outer edges I'm just going to use similar shades such as barley um, blue clam, blue clam, lagoon, Pacific. Just going through them again and just making sure those edges are blended and at an angle. Um, I'm just going to use, I'm going to use a flat brush if I can find one. I'm going to try this one first. See if this works. It's just a a little Molly O'Brien flat brush in Kira. So yeah, that's that's basically where it stems from. A lot of my, and it is true. I hate to be out of control. I hate to feel like I'm out of control. Um, and that's where a lot of it stems from. And when I'm not in control, I get extremely anxious. And yeah. I've had many a panic attack on the bus, on the train. Um, I'll never forget this one panic attack I had at work. Um, well, I've had a few at work, but this one in particular was pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty monumental. <laughs> I um, basically I was in a meeting, and my work colleague, and she's a close friend of mine as well, knows obviously about this. Um, she knows about it and how I am and she could see me starting one of my things that I do when I start to panic is I hold my throat probably to do with the sick sort of thing I don't know because panic attacks obviously make you feel sick and it's like a big bloody circle um, and yeah and she knew what, what, what was happening because I was shaking I was starting to hyperventilate in this meeting and I just remember like excusing myself probably not the most discreetly <laughs> and yeah it wasn't a good, it wasn't a good one um, so yeah obviously the pandemic and things like that I know it's not vomiting but it's not helped <laughs> um, with my germs and, and stuff because 
you know it all plays in so that's another little fun thing that I've had to deal with this year which I know a lot of people have and everybody's had their own issues with it to deal with but just letting you know that's mine <laughs> so that's not helped um, on that perspective um, I went through a stage where my anxiety was getting so bad it was and I was trying to suppress it for so long sorry no drink it was seeping out into my normal everyday life so places where I won't get anxious or times when I won't get anxious I was getting anxious so um, I had a thing where um, at work, well not even at work but when I was I, I was scared to drive because I was constantly worried that I'd done something wrong whilst I was driving and I didn't know about it which sounds absolutely bonkers um, but I'd, I'd, I'd spend ages just driving in circles checking things and making sure that I hadn't done things but because I'd go back again I'd just cause myself to do the bleeding same thing and freak out again and I got myself into a right tizzy and because I was that was happening um, I eventually took the um, choice because for years I refused and refused and refused to go on any kind of medication at all but I needed to be on something in the end just to calm me down because I was just I couldn't I couldn't settle um, so the doctors put me on um, a mild form of um, antidepressant which just helps my anxiety um, I'm still on it now um, it's citalopram if anybody's interested um, and yeah it's helped me a lot to be fair um, so you know yeah and that's that really um, I obviously want to go back to see a counsellor I want to continue with what I was doing before two years ago um, I feel like I'm in a, a healthy place again um, I, I was there was a bit of a setback with the pandemic and everything like that but um, I feel like I'm, I'm I'm ready to carry to try again and I will keep trying until until I, um, not till I'm better but until I I'm trying to think of the word because I will never probably ever be free of this this will always be something I will suffer for the rest of my life and I know that um, but I want I don't want it to affect my day-to-day -day life I basically want to do it so I can have children um, because uh, <laughs> as much as I don't really want them right now I do want children I, I've always wanted children excuse me let me just sort this out and uh, yeah I've always wanted kids so I really really don't want it to affect me like, like that so I will eventually I'd, not eventually, I'm hopefully soon. I'm just going to put some more primer on underneath my eyes. I'm just using my Sigma one. And, because uh, I just, yeah. I, I don't want it to stop me from progressing in the future for what I actually want in my life, which is children. I'm not bothered about drinking or anything like that. The days are gone where... Uh, <laughs> I was having fun in people were having fun in clubs and stuff the weekend. That's not a second live without booze. I'm not too bothered about it. But kids, it's just something I, I want to at least try to pursue um, one day. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Take my camera for a second whilst I was thinking about what I was doing because I got a bit confused. Just sort my wig out. I'm also getting my hair done this month. Now I can say that because it's January. Um, 
on the 9th, 9th, 9th I want to say, finally getting this wig sorted out, getting it um, sorted, just getting, what am I getting done? What do you call it? Uh, I'm getting a root stretch, which I've already got already, I'm just getting the maybe blonde bits put up a little bit more, um, and I'm telling to put on because this bit here, I've got like a band of weirdness, brassiness around here that never lightens up and this bit does so as you can see it's a different tone so getting that sorted out hopefully so under my eyes I'm going to go into the shade Lagoon and Pacific again the deeper shades just going to tap that off and I'm just going to run that under just going to stamp it I'm really liking the stamped out look at the moment because a few reasons one can't be asked with doing other ones. I, I, I don't know how many times I say can't be asked in my videos, but it's a lot. <laughs> and I just want the deeper shades on the out on my outer edge of my eyes. Just stamping it now. And then I'm going to go into the shade Blue Clam. And then I'm just going to go into the shade B BG. Bee Gees, <laughs> Fiji and Barley, mix them together and put that on my inner part. And then I'm just going to get a little brush if I can. I might just use this guy, this teeny tiny Made by Mitchell brush MC2 and I'm just going to just buff that slightly so it's a bit more blended. Yeah, cool. And then my waterline, I think I'm going to do green just to contrast it slightly. Um, try this one. This is a Colourpop green Cream Gel Eyeliner in the shade Electric Daisy. And then I think I might actually go over that with a yellow just to mix it up a little bit. And I'm going to use my other colour pot one, and this is in the shade CRSSD Crust. <laughs> Whatever that means. That's made it a bit more vibrant, although this one's a bit killed it a little bit, don't know if you can see, but, oops, um, so yeah, I'm just going to give you a bit of a roundup of this palette, it's really nice, really nice, I like this look, it looks pretty, very nice, I'm happy with it, and yeah, the colour of the shades are beautiful, um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else I can say really, but yeah, that's, that's my little mental health journey, um, I don't want it to be all doom and gloom um, on an everyday basis and everything. I'm okay. I'm okay. You know, it is what it is. We've all got our struggles. We've all got our own personal problems and things like that. I just thought I'd share with, share with your mind. So if there's anybody out there who might suffer with what I suffer with, you're not alone. Um, I know I felt alone for a long time and felt quite embarrassed, ashamed, all sorts, but really you shouldn't for anything even if you haven't got what I've got if you've got any sort of mental health illness or anything just absolutely anything like that never be ashamed always talk about it and speak to people you feel comfortable speaking to you don't have to tell everybody not everybody needs to know but you do need to um, you do need to talk about it you do need to express it a little bit because keeping it to yourself does weigh, it sort of does weigh on you quite a bit um, so yeah, I just thought I'd say that. Um, I'm going to finish my face, the rest of my face off camera, and then I'll do a roundup. And yeah, I just don't want it to be a bit too long. I just thought I'd do a little bit of a share with you, try this new eyeshadow palette with you sort of thing. And yeah, I will be back very shortly. And we're back. All done. All done. Yeah, so this is the finished look. I'm pleased with it. I'll link everything that I'm wearing on my face down below. It's just my general makeup. I haven't done anything fancy. So, 
yeah so uh, back to this like I said the palette amazing and yeah thank you very much for joining me and having the chat that we had about uh, my mental health journey and yeah if you've got any questions or anything you'd like to ask me or just even talk to me if you want to discuss anything uh, comment down below and if it's anything that you want to you know talk privately about if it's anything you know that you don't feel comfortable commenting on youtube about um to do with your mental health or anything that i could help you with then uh, just uh, dm me on instagram um my instagram's down below as well um but yeah um, I'm happy to help anybody out who wants the help and who just wants to talk to a friendly face. I feel like I've got a friendly face. So yeah, thank you very much and if you, again, like my content, please like and subscribe to my channel. I say like and subscribe. Like, comment and subscribe. Um, it means the world to me like I always say and yeah, it helps me out so much more than you realise and yeah. Uh, I will see you in the next one guys and thank you very much for listening because it's a topic close to my heart and it's it's taken me a lot to talk about this openly um, and I'm, I'm quite proud of myself that I've got here anyway. But yeah, thank you very much and I will see you in the next one. Bye!